Hello everybody and welcome back to the Traction Channel for another brand new video and today we are bringing you another brand new piece of hardware because Fanatec have sent us their CSL Elite V2 pedals to replace the V1s that were discontinued earlier in the year. Now in this video I'm just going to try them out for the very first time, give you my first impressions and before that we're going to take a closer look at where they actually differ from the original CSL Elite pedals. So here we have both the original CSL Elite pedals and the CSL Elite V2 pedals. Can you spot the difference? It's pretty difficult from the front. If we turn them upside down, they are also very similar, I've got to be honest. The only real noticeable difference you can see here is at the mounting point there at the front, you've got a little bit of a gap. It makes it a lot easier for you to get your fingers in, get the thing mounted to the rig. Hopefully we'll be able to try that out a bit later on. But other than that, it's very, very similar. If we look at the back of the pedals, this is probably where you will see the biggest difference. So, these are the V2s, the new ones. And as you can see, we've got some spacers in here, basically just to make the whole thing a little bit more rigid and prevent side to side movement. The old pedals by default didn't have that. However, when you bought the load cell kit, which this one does have, they basically came with something very, very similar. So even though we don't have them on right now, they're basically very, very similar in that way as well, because you can obviously adjust these when you get the load cell sensor and make them just as rigid. So not really massive improvements there. In terms of the throttle and the clutch, they look almost identical, but there is a very significant change. I say significant, it's not really gonna make a massive difference to your user experience. Instead of potentiometers in these pedals to measure the distance you push the pedal down, we have hall sensors in the new pedals. Probably makes it a little bit more reliable, might last a little bit longer, but you won't really notice a difference. It is the brake pedals where you will probably most likely notice a proper difference between the two. So the new ones, much like the old ones with the load cell kit, can take up to 90 kilograms of foot pressure, which is actually more than I weigh even after a big Christmas dinner. The actual load cell systems themselves though are slightly different. The old pedals had an elastomer and a sponge set up to give you that dual stage braking. The new ones, they've got rid of the sponge, they don't have that anymore. You've actually got a metal spring at the top and then three elastomers instead of the five elastomers you had on the old ones. In terms of elastomer options, there are a lot. The old ones gave you three different stiffness levels, five of each, you had 65s, 85s and 95s I believe whereas the new one on the V2s have 65s, 75s, and 85s. I don't exactly know what difference that's gonna make at this stage, but I'm looking forward to trying them out later. So with the old load cell setup, it's a different mechanism to actually change the elastomers as well. So you basically just pull this up from the bottom, very simple, that comes loose, and then you can take the end off, you can take the elastomers off, change them around to your preference, pop it back on, pop that back in there, and the brake will work again. Now on the new V2s, this system is different. It's a bit more similar, I believe, to the CSL load cell pedals. Now you actually get this little thing in the box that comes with it. This is to help you change the elastomer. So you put one on each side like that, and then you pull it from the back. So you essentially do this. I've not actually done this yet, so this is gonna be interesting. Oh, it's not half difficult. Thank you very much. Okay, so with no outside assistance whatsoever, I've learned the technique, I think, to be able to do this. So if you use one hand and push the pedal forward as you go, oh, that's falling to bits as well. That's how you do it. Just pop this back in. There we go. So yeah, very, very simple, straightforward process. In all seriousness, that required a little bit more strength and technique than I expected, and I clearly didn't have the technique right. So not the most simple thing to put together, but I think once you get used to it, it'll probably be okay. Okay, so we've got the pedals mounted to the rig, and it was actually a fairly straightforward process with this particular rig. There was one point where I did get the assistance of someone else just to hold the pedals in place. It's definitely possible with one person, slightly easier with two. And we're gonna see how they actually perform. I'm starting off, I'm gonna wear shoes. I've left the default elastomers in there, which were the 85s, the stiffest ones. Probably another reason why I managed to, uh, well, I didn't manage very easily to actually take the elastomers out and change them. I've also decided to go for the Formula Pro car on R Factor 2 around Monza. Now Monza is great for testing brakes because there's lots of heavy braking zones, a few short ones as well, and the Formula Pro of course is very easy to lock up. I'll just put the brake down fully, and you can see no ABS, car locking up nicely. And straight away with these stiffer elastomers in there, 
I can already feel that these pedals are going to be something very good for a load cell option. You know, they're not hydraulic, but as long as they give you that stiffness. I won't be able to test the reliability, of course, in this brief session, but I will at least be able to tell you how they feel. We're going to hit the brakes just before the 100 board. No sign of a lockup. The pedal feels nice and stiff underneath my foot. Into Lesmo 1, shorter braking zone. Again, you could put the pedal down fairly confidently. And it just doesn't feel like you're anywhere near locking up. I almost did there, I think. Now, as well as being able to adjust the elastomers, you can also adjust the software, the Fanatec software, and change your percentage of braking force. So you can make it stiffer or a bit easier to reach 100%. Now, I've got it on 80% at the moment. Which means there's still a little bit of headroom if I want to make it even more difficult to get to 100. Uh, but at the same time, I can make it a lot softer as well, a lot easier by changing the elastomers or adjusting the software. So, we're starting our first flying lap. Let's brake just before the 100 board. Nice and hard on the brake pedal. Oh, okay. Did manage to lock up there, but I was fairly hard on the pedal, as I said. And now I've poor chaired it. By the way, I should also point out I'm using the DD Pro wheelbase for this. And these pedals are compatible with pretty much every modern Fanatec product. They should be compatible with most products, to be fair. But you can plug them straight into your Fanatec wheelbase without any issues. And if you're using PC as well, you can plug it straight into the PC with a USB cable. And that means you can use the pedals with any wheelbase. As long as your game accepts, obviously, individual inputs, that is. But yeah, as I'm saying, you can plug it into any Fanatec wheelbase. If that's on Xbox and that works on Xbox, that's absolutely fine. If it's on PlayStation, again, absolutely fine. As long as it's connected to the wheelbase, they should work. No bother at all. This is feeling really good so far. I'm a big fan of the look of the CSL Elite pedals. I mean, they look identical to the first ones, but I quite like that. Aluminium construction, you've got that kind of sandblasted look. The powder coating. I really like it. We're going to attack another braking zone here. Break just before the 100. This time I don't want to lock up, but I want to get brake nice and quickly. That is absolutely solid. And I've still got a lot of feeling in the pedal. Like I felt like I could have squeezed it a bit more, but I did feel like I was in control of things. Now the load cell itself has a rating of up to 150 kilograms, so there's a lot of leeway in that as well. It's a fairly decent load cell, I would say. Not that I'm an expert on the technology behind them. I know how they work, but I certainly wouldn't know how to make one, that's for sure. But yeah, so far so good. The uh, clutch pedal and the throttle pedal just feel like you'd expect, to be honest. The hall sensor, as, as opposed to the potentiometer, doesn't really make much difference to how it feels. But it is probably a better setup going forward and probably better for whoa, reliability as well in the long term. Gonna open my DRS as we cross past the DRS boards. Get some good speed up. Right, we'll try and make it for T1 this time. I'm gonna brick a little earlier and just try not to lock up. I'd say that was too early, but yeah, no problem at all. Avoiding a lockup over the curbs. Accelerate away. Bob's your uncle. Now you're probably also wondering about the price of these pedals. They are going to set you back 300 euros or 300 US dollars. We don't have a price in pounds, but I'm sure you can work it out through conversions. And to be honest, considering the actual pedals themselves come already with a load cell, you don't have to buy a load cell kit or anything like that. And they've got a removable clutch. It's not too bad, like they're not cheap, but they're kind of what you would expect, to be honest, from a brand new product. I just wish they looked a little different. Like I said earlier, I do like the look of them, and I really do. Some people don't, I do. But it would be nice if there was just something on them to make them look a bit different. Like, you, you want to be able to look at them and go, yes, those are the new version. You know, you don't want to look at them and think, I can't tell them apart. So just something Fanatec, a little detail would have been really nice. But I'm being very picky when I talk about that. I mean. Look at that, trail braking in there, into Alboreto, no problem at all. Full stability. And this is with shoes on, again, on the stiffest possible elastomer setup. And it, it feels pretty good. Okay, we're back underway, this time in socks. We'll see if I can cope with the 85 elastomers. Break just before the 100. Oh yeah, absolutely fine. Lots of feeling through the pedal, no problem applying the same forces. It's not, you know, the pedal plates are feel nice underfoot, there's no pain or any uncomfortable feeling there. Under the Fanatec bridge, late braking over the curb, a bit too much curb, back on the power. Can't really blame the pedals for any of that. I have to say, so far so good with these, both with shoes and socks. 
it's one of the stiffest load cell setups I've ever experienced and it actually gives you a lot of control because of that. I'm not saying that just making them stiffer will definitely make them better, but obviously there's an element of that to it because the hydraulic pedals, the more expensive pedals, tend to be a lot stiffer. Whereas there's only so much you can do with load cells and yeah, I'm very, very impressed. It's not completely different to anything else I've used or the old ones for example, but in terms of load cell experiences I've had, it's absolutely right up there. No complaints whatsoever in my first session. I do want to properly test them as well, so what I'm going to do next is jump on iRacing, which is a sim where I've always struggled with braking, especially using my G29s that I've got at home. I tend to lock up a lot. So I'm going to jump on iRacing, try them out on there, and see if I can be consistent driving something a bit more rudimentary. I've jumped in the Ford Mustang V8 supercar, or just supercar as it's known now. This is one of the toughest cars on iRacing to drive without locking up a lot, and I've decided to make it even tougher. So I've actually changed the elastomers from the toughest, the 85s, to the softest, which are 65s. Now, I must say, the process of changing them over, I'm going to show you the video of it. I took a video of it. It was so much easier with the pedals actually mounted to the rig because you're not pushing against nothing. You don't have to hold it in place as you do it. So the process was a breeze. So if you were worried about it being a bit complicated or a bit tough, like I demonstrated at the very start of the video, do not worry. Once it's mounted or solid, you'll be absolutely fine. The softest elastomers should, in theory, allow you to use this not only on a rig and hard mounted, but also with the pedals, maybe on the floor, under a desk, something like that, using the rubber grips underneath. So the theory is you should be able to put less force through them and they should still have the same effect. So I've actually upped the braking force on the Fanatec software to 100% from 80, just to give me a bit more of a fighting chance. And I've actually made the uh, bottom left HUD there with the inputs a little bit bigger. So you can clearly see if I stamp on the brake pedal now, I have to push really hard to even get anywhere near 100%. So even though the, the pedal itself feels softer, you still need just as much force to actually get the car to slow down. So, I mean, even if I try and lock this up, let me try here. Oh, I barely managed it. And that's with the softest elastomers, guys. And the softer spring as well. So the first stage of the dual stage braking is a little bit softer as well. It totally changes the feel of it. I'm not going to lie to you, but... With 100% braking force, it's still pretty easy to dial out unnecessary lockups, and it gives you a fair amount of control. Yes, it doesn't quite give you that same brick wall feeling when you're really pushing against something solid, but the main thing is that you're able to actually control it and adjust it as you go, and as you can see, first lap out of the pits, okay, I was about to say, I'm in full control, I'm clearly not in full control, but once again, let's not blame the pedals for that. So I'm back on 80% overall braking force and the stiffest elastomers and the stiffest spring as well. That's the feeling I liked. And as you can see straight away, we're locking up much easier. But that was still me pushing fairly hard. So you've just got to adjust to that. We'll head down to the bottom of the hill, hit the brakes. No lock up, lots of control. Trail braking. No bother back in the throttle, do some drifting, because why not? Little bit of a lock-up there, but nothing too bad. I know I keep banging on about lock-ups. Um, there are other stages of braking, but, you know, lock-ups have to be the most important when you're really, really pushing it at a high level. You need to know how much braking you can get away with before you're braking too much. But there's also, of course, the other stage of braking, the very early stage. If you're just dabbing on the brake slightly, and this thing has the uh, the spring system rather than the sponge that the old CSL Elite pedals had. That bit feels absolutely fine. You don't get quite as much movement, I would say. It's a shorter travel, but you still get that very easy to press feeling to just blip the brakes on. So if I down this hill, just brake a little bit lightly. There you go. Lots of control there. And then you can just squeeze it on harder when need be. It feels absolutely fine. At this stage, I should definitely reiterate the fact that the pedals are very much up there as one of the most important elements of your sim racing rig, possibly the most important. Your wheelbase is, of course, important. You need good force feedback. You really want, you know, direct drive and as much instant feedback as you can possibly get so that you can feel every bump in the road, and I totally get that. But as I lock up a little bit through this right-hander, the braking is where a lot of time can be gained and lost because if you don't have confidence under braking, you can't really afford to, to try too hard. You can't afford to find the limits of it and you can't be consistent. As soon as you know where your braking limits are, you can build in that consistency through muscle memory 
And if I were to keep lapping around Brands Hatch here in my V8 Supercar Ford, muscle memory is exactly what would start to take place. It's already feeling fairly easy to control the lockups. I'm still locking up sometimes because I'm experimenting and trying to push it that bit harder, but I am perfectly happy with the amount of braking force I'm leaving on the table here. Paddock Hill, one of the toughest corners in the country. No bother at all on entry. Okay, I was rubbish on the exit myself. But under braking, not an issue. I think I'm going to park up and call it there, but that was my very first shot of these CSL Elite V2s. And I have to say, for a load cell pedal setup, I'm very, very impressed with the feel of them. I really am. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video or found it at all useful, please do let us know in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe to the Traction channel for more hardware reviews and first impressions in the future. There is lots of exciting stuff coming up, I can absolutely promise you. And of course, the important thing, make sure you tune in this weekend for the first round of the Le Mans Virtual Series live from Bahrain. That will be absolutely fantastic. And until I see you next time, thank you so much for watching. Keep it pinned and have a great day.